months of planning and preparation and the great trip up to the Kaneni River and um, all the driving that we'd done in the two days that we had spent at the Serra camp, it's now time reality has set in. We've been absolutely spoiled by the Wilderness Safaris um, camp staff, the food has been amazing, everything is amazing, but now we have to start our big journey. And uh, Jacques and I got up quite early on the first day, this is the 4th of September, and uh, we prepared our final things, put everything that we needed to um, organize on our fat bikes, and we headed out um, for the start of this, this great expedition. Getting out of Serra and out of the Kaneni River, we had to pass through a massive mountain range. So although we were expecting a lot of sand, the initial bit was very rocky. But once we got over that first little mountain range, we hit a lot of sand and things changed dramatically for us. You know, I've always pictured um, cycling with a fat bike over sand dunes to be a lot easier um, than it was, but it turned out to be extremely difficult. The Kauaka felt is filled with the Himba people, and the Himba people are absolutely amazing. You cannot believe that people would live in such a desolate place and still be so happy. We came across the village quite quickly uh, once we started getting out of the Kaneni River, and they were just really beautiful, very welcoming, um, and we had a fantastic uh, time with them. It was very short lived though because we still had a long way to go on that first day. Um, a lot of sand and very duny, so we spent quite a bit of time on our feet uh, to get to the top of some of those massive sand dunes. Although they're not, they don't look exactly like sand dunes, um, it still took a lot of effort. And then we had lunch at a rocky outcrop um, just above, uh, probably at about 650 meters above the Serra camp. It was a welcome break because my butt was feeling a little bit sore. Um, I wasn't used to the fat bike and the fat bike seat and uh, so I was quite anxious after lunch to get going again. So Jacques and I headed out and once we had finished lunch we got out onto this massive plateau. <coughs> it did flatten quite a bit but it still remained extremely sandy and hard work. And you must remember at this time of the year and at that part um, of the desert and the skeleton coast, we have a traditional south southwest wind blowing. It took us 11 hours to do that first section of the um, of the trip, and getting into camp was a great relief. We managed to rest a bit, but day two came quickly, and uh, as we headed out, we were one of the first things that we came across was a, a statue of a man sitting against a tree and it looks so real <clears throat> and we found out that these men are called the lone men of the Kokafelt and evidently these men are placed by an artist which we don't know who it is and there are an untold amount of these uh, lone men out there and uh, the number that we came across there was number 19 so we stoked to see it, it was amazing <clears throat> but putting that aside we had to get going again and um, we were now absolutely on the edge of the skeleton coast, which is where we wanted to be. And the views that we had and the cycling that we had got a lot better. We managed to change our bikes from the fat bikes to the normal mountain bikes with the slightly bigger tires. And um, <coughs> we had some fantastic cycling. Our backup is a vital part of this journey again, once again, with our Suzus and the Dunlop Grand Trek series tires and they've been holding out magnificently for us. You know water is a scarce commodity in this part of the world so um, to not have backup would be extremely difficult. So lunch for us meant energy and we ate a lot of food in the first few days. So day two is done. We are super chuffed with the last few days. My butt is starting to feel a little bit better adapting to uh, the bike that I know much more than my big fat bike. So it goes for another 12 days of cycling before we get to Orchestra.